Tony, man, I have been so excited about this moment for a long time. I've been looking forward to kicking this series off, so thanks for being here today. It's great to be here, Michael. appreciate you so much. Yeah, so we just started a new sermon series uh, called Making Disciples, and we refer to this one as our all-church study, right. which basically means we're encouraging all of our small groups and people right now in this season. Of course, throughout the rest of the year, there's a little more flexibility, right. but to focus on this study. And so I'm really curious, as, as we're kicking all this off, you know, for you as our senior pastor, as, as God gives you a vision for this, why is this particular study so important to you? Well, over the last couple of years, God has really put a passion in my heart for discipleship. And so I knew that it's been something that I've known is in the scripture all along, but, you know, it's just something you think that you're doing it or maybe you're not doing it well. And so it's just one of those things that I feel like as the church, our church, me specifically, that I don't know if I really have done discipleship effectively. And so when we were praying about a theme for the year, I'm like, okay, yeah, making disciples. Let's do that. That sort of was Jesus' final command. And so this time we decided what are the skills that people really need to grow in their faith and mature and be fully discipled. But the reason I say skills is so that they can then in turn disciple other people as well. Because it's not just enough for us to get the information or even us personally get the skill. Discipleship means you're, you're discipling someone else. Yeah, so you said we're going to be focusing on six different skills. And, yeah. and I like the way you kicked it off. You said um, something to the effect of, now, we're going to be looking at these right now over the next six weeks, but it may take a whole year or longer to really feel like you're getting a grasp of these. Um, so a lot of people know this information, but I don't know if they've really taken the time to hone a skill. Um, and so that's, that's what we're hoping will take place in, in this. And so just like everybody's got different skills, has different skill sets. Um, you know, I, I think of people in our church that are truck drivers, you know, I, I can't back up a trailer to save my life. I've never really <laughs> learned that skill, right? But these guys, 18 wheelers, they could just, you know, it's amazing. They have developed a skill. And that's what we're talking about. This is something that you practice, you, you really try to hone it. And then once you do, you feel, okay, hey, I, I feel like I've mastered this. I can teach somebody else this. And, and that's discipleship. That's what Jesus did for three years with these disciples. And I thought it was really interesting that you started with the Holy Spirit. You yeah. started with being filled with the Spirit. And, and you made a distinction in the message uh, between being uh, indwelled by the Spirit yeah. and I think filled with the Spirit. Sure. I, I'd love to hear you say that again because I think that was super important. You know, as Christians, when we first are born again, I mean, that's sort of a religious term, but but um, that means that we're born of the Spirit. So we have inherited from Adam and Eve a spirit of death that's in our soul. And so when we're born again, something spiritually changes on the inside. We're a new creation. And I'm, and I'm using all these terms that the Bible uses. But, but the Bible says at the moment that we become a follower of Christ, His Spirit comes to live inside of us. We've received, you know, just like you've, like little children go, I prayed and asked Jesus into my heart. What does that mean? That means the very spirit of Jesus Christ himself came to live inside of you. Okay, so, so we've received the Holy Spirit. Now, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, you may possess the Holy Spirit, does it, but does the Holy Spirit really possess you? Are you being controlled? Are you being, you know, influenced? And so... Um, so that's really the distinction. And it's very important that we learn to walk in the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit, um, for us to really accomplish what God's called us to do. I'm talking to my kids this morning, and I said, you know, when we're talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit, um, we're talking about being filled with love. We're talking about being filled with joy. We're talking about being filled with peace. I mean, this is this is what we're referring to, is, and, 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 and don't we just really, really want to experience that kind of peace? And my kids are like, yeah, yeah, Dad, I, I want that. Yeah. I want that. Because uh, we're kind of in that stage with our son who's about to go off to college, and, and he's wrestling with a lot of things as a senior, you know, you know, with his car and a little work that needs to get done on that, so there's money that needs to go towards that, and where do I go in, in college, and, and how do I take care of this next responsibility with work, and he just feels like he's juggling all these things, and so, you know, 
peace uh, sometimes his nights are restless. Yep. Sometimes my nights are restless. Absolutely. And and I think you know as a dad, how do I help him understand that being filled with the Spirit is about finding the the peace of the Spirit in the midst of all these situations. Yeah, and and it's and it, not just simply peace, but it's the very character of Christ. It is, you know, Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So that's, that's, that's in essence what we're saying whenever we're asking the Lord to fill us with the Holy Spirit. We're, we're laying down our flesh, our agenda, because I don't know about you, but I mean, I have a tendency that, okay, I've got my to-do list, and so I'll charge ahead and this, 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 and that can be halfway through a day. And like, I did all this in my own strength. Yeah. I really never paused. I never really thought, okay, does God have another agenda? Does God have another plan? And so you really do have to pause and confess and repent and surrender and ask the Lord to fill you. Because again, we're all dealing with different kind of stuff, you know? I mean, whether it's okay, fear of the future, what's my, you know, what's going to happen in college? Or it can be, my goodness, I mean, marriage is struggling. How am I going to love this person that I don't feel love toward right now? Or, you know, um, we get hurt. I mean, people say things, do things, we hurt. And so you go, you know, my natural tendency when I'm hurt is I just sort of go in a shell. And so I'm like, okay, I withdraw. And so you go, that's not healthy. That's not where God wants me to be. How am I going to get out of my shell right now, even though I feel like that's what I want to run and do? Or, you know, some people it's anger, right? And so they just want to lash out. And so you go, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to respond that way. And so all the things that get us in trouble is when we're walking in the flesh, right? We've grieved the Spirit. We've quenched the Spirit. We're, we're, you know, we're, it's my kingdom come, my will be done. And so it always, it's always leads to further disaster. And so, yeah, this is super critical of just learning to pause, stop, and allow the Holy Spirit to fill us so that we can really operate the way we're supposed to. I love the way you illustrated that in the sermon with a sailboat. Yeah. You know, you had this, this sailboat illustration of, of, of I guess, um, unfurling the, did I say that right? Unfurling? Well, that's a hard we, word for me to we, say. We, 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 we say, you know, <laughs> untying. Untying, that's untying an easier the ropes, word. <laughs> untying the ropes that are around the mask, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you first got to untie. Right? Yeah, which is the confession part, right? Yep. And then allowing that sail to be to be filled with right. air, we're allowing ourselves to be filled with the Spirit. We're getting out of the right. way and letting the Spirit. And that same metaphor came up again uh, in our small group material because we have some small group materials that yeah. are going along. This this uh, pretty incredible devotional guide yeah. um, that that we used last night in our small group. Uh, the videos with Taylor and 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 all of that so very helpful. Uh, but 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 my small group really found that that metaphor of a sailboat to be very, very helpful to think through the just, Lord, I confess this. Lord, fill me. Yep. And, and, and that's it, right? It, it's very simple. You know, this is not like, oh my goodness, I need to go on a 20 day fast and I need to, you know, journal all this kind of stuff. It's, it's really just simple going, okay, Search my heart, Lord. Reveal to me the sin. I want to confess it now, and that's untying the rope. Okay, Lord, here I am. I'm lifting up the sails of my life. I just, I'm surrendered to you. Fill me with your spirit today. It can just be that simple with three sentences. It's just that simple. We, um, we talk a lot. We recently in our small group started talking a lot more about accountability and encouragement. And um, one of the ideas that we came up with last night is we use GroupMe as a way of just keeping up with each other. Usually it's just a lot of fun, uh, but along the way it's prayer requests and uh, happy birthdays and all yeah, those kinds cool. of things. And, and so one of the things we decided to do this week specifically is that each day a different person is going to post to GroupMe a reminder and an encouragement. Uh, because like you said, we've got to stop, we've got to pause, but sometimes I get super busy and I forget to do that. Yeah. So these reminders are just another way for us to encourage each other to, to pause, to confess, and to ask the Spirit to fill us. I don't know. Hopefully that idea is helpful. No, to it, I think it's great. And again, accountability, as I mentioned, I think this weekend that, 
you know, I have it on my phone where it just as a reminder to me because I'll just plow through the day. And so those little reminders help me go, okay, I need to stop and pause, you know, or have an accountability. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I actually have it on my watch um, yeah. at three or four different times. My watch will, will yeah. an alarm will go off and it's yeah. just a reminder to pause and pray, yeah. pause and pray because yeah. uh, I need that. I do too. I do too. So, okay, so this is the first of six. We have five more. Yep. So give us a hint where we're going. Yes. Next week, we're talking about how to pray, and we'll be looking at the Lord's Prayer because really, we don't need to complicate it. Jesus laid it out. Hey, this is the model prayer, and it's really, it's there. It's everything that you need in your relationship with God. It's right there. Tony, I'm excited, man. This is, this is great stuff. Great. It's well, going to be a great series. And, you well, know, for you, uh, if you're new to Silverdale, let me just take a moment to say welcome. We're excited that you're taking a moment to watch this video and hope that you will, number one, go back and, and check out the message if you missed it. Uh, you can find that at our YouTube channel as well as at our podcast. Uh, and number two, um, pick up one of these devotions. You can come by the Bonnie Oaks channel or, or Bonnie Oaks channel, <laughs> Bonnie Oaks campus, uh, North Ottawa campus, or you can download this uh, silverdalebc.com slash making disciples is where you'll find this. And then number three, we hope that you'll be a part of one of our weekend services. We have a variety of times and locations throughout the greater Chattanooga area. You can go to our website to find those times and locations or even online. So you can, if you're not able to come in person, join us there. We hope that you'll be a part of one of our services. Tony, thanks. Thanks, thanks Michael. I enjoyed it.